Today we're looking at factories and the Industrial Revolution. Hello, welcome to the Daily Bell Ringer. Please don't forget to subscribe and take a look at the questions down in the description. Also, don't forget to check out dailybellringer.com for resources that go with many of the Bell Ringer videos. Prior to 1800, almost every product a person owned in America was handmade by either a person in their home or by a craftsman. Shirts, shoes, pots, pans, farming equipment, wagons, barrels, tools, almost anything you could name took the time and labor of an individual to create from start to finish. However, beginning in the late 1700s, new inventions such as the power loom and steam engine began to be developed that allowed products to be mass produced by machines. Now, what I mean by mass production is making large quantities or numbers of items. The mass production of products would lead the world into the Industrial Revolution. The Industrial Revolution really began in Britain with the production of thread for sewing. Thread was made by spinning tightly together cotton fibers, which were generally done by ind an individual operating a spinning wheel in their home to make the thread. By 1780, British inventors had mechanized the process and now could produce finer and stronger thread than before. Interestingly, the increase in production of thread required more cotton, which of course the invention of the cotton gin aided in that production, but the increase in demand for cotton caused the cotton market to grow rapidly and unfortunately with it the growth of the institution of slavery, as plantations across the American South became one of the primary suppliers of cotton to the world. The British attempted to create a monopoly of thread production by making it illegal for anyone to share the designs and plans for these early factories outside of Britain. But in 1789, Samuel Slater, who had been an apprentice in one of these factories, immigrated to the United States and in 1793 opened a spinning mill in Pawtucket, Rhode Island, which was the first water-powered cotton spinning mill in America. Slater would later be called the father of the Industrial Revolution. However, many in Britain called him Slater the traitor for bringing the plans to America. Slater and his partners would go on to build several more factories across the Northeast and implemented what became known as the family system, as entire families worked in their factories, including children as young as six or seven years old. These families would then live in towns established by the factory. In the early 1800s, political tensions contributed to a stronger self-reliance on American-produced goods. As the Napoleonic Wars raged in Europe in the early 1800s, America attempted to remain neutral. So in 1807, the Embargo Act was put in place that put a ban on foreign trade. So to compensate for this loss in foreign-produced goods, more factories began to be built in America. Then, after the War of 1812 and the Embargo Act had been lifted, foreign-produced goods, especially from Britain, began to flow back into America. So Congress enacted the Tariff of 1816, which put an additional charge of up to 25% on any imported good. Now Americans wanted to purchase American-made goods from American factories, which again spurred the growth of factories in America. New inventions sped the growth of these factories as the power loom was developed that, that took thread and weaved it into cloth. And then the introduction of steam power allowed factories to operate more machines with more power. During the 1820s, Lowell, Massachusetts was established with large textile mills. Later, it would be called the cradle of the Industrial Revolution. Factories revolutionized the methods by which items were produced and the labor needed to produce them. Factories broke down the process of creating an item into many small steps. So now instead of one person needing to know how to create an item from start to finish, now one person only had to understand one step of the entire process. This meant that the demand for unskilled labor became very high and people began to flock to these centers of manufacturing and urban centers or cities, especially in the Northeast, grew rapidly. Factories primarily focused in the Northeast because land in the South was used for year-round agriculture, as land in the Northeast could not be used for year-round agriculture, so the price of that land was much cheaper than the, the price of land in the South. By the time of the Civil War in 1861, there were over 100,000 factories in the North compared to barely 18,000 factories in the South. 
As the 1800s progressed, cities began to expand around these factories and land became more scarce and expensive. Coupled with that, many workers in these factories found themselves tied to wage labor jobs. So many began to look west for new opportunities. The Industrial Revolution basically fed the American drive to move west and to settle the continent. Although these early factories in America were centers of production, they were also the seed of change in America, as now Americans had more products available to them, but also more employment opportunities and options of where to live, and eventually the desire to follow their manifest destiny. So with that, hopefully you learned something, and thanks for watching.